Hi everyone, Fritz here. And in this video, as the title suggests, we're gonna go into, is WFG a scam? Now the reason why I wanted to make this video is because when you're putting your money away with a financial firm or a financial consultant or advisor, you want to make sure that that person has a good reputation within the industry. But not only that, that the company that they're using to help you grow and save your money for the future is also a reputable company with a good sound reputation in the industry as well as the general public. So as of current day. WFG, World Financial Group, does not have any financial products or solutions. We are a financial broker that works with over 200 different companies in order to present and represent our clients with the best and most suitable products and solutions out there. From my videos, I'm pretty sure you guys can guess what kind of person that I am, but I don't want you to think that I'm going to only give you my opinion, so I wanted to give you someone else's opinion, someone completely different from me. Let's meet one of my friends. Her name is Bethany, she's actually a school teacher. Let's go ahead and jump over to her classroom. Wait, let's get to know Bethany a little bit, get to know her background, and see the perspective that she's coming from when she's answering this question of, is WFG a scam? Bethany, can you give us a little bit of insight to yourself? So my name is Bethany, and I'm a middle school math teacher, and this is my sixth year teaching seventh grade math. We're in my classroom right now. Woo! It may be no surprise to some of you who've watched my videos, you see the Transamerica Pyramid, you've seen WFG posters, you've seen me post the 2019 WFG convention, you've seen all of that. I'll even pull it up on my phone. <gasps> <gasps> Looks like WFG to me. Enough about me. Bethany, how long has it been since WFG has been introduced to you? Two years. In those two years, what are some of the things that you've picked up on for yourself? A lot of financial knowledge, um, which is really helpful because I came in with none. Um, I've gained a lot of friends and people who have now become my family. One of my most favorite thing is that I've got a lot of personal growth, personal and professional growth out of this. I work with 12 year olds, so. <laughs> I felt at a certain point I was like turning into a 12 year old again. So that was hard and so like being able to interact with all these people who are very inspiring and very knowledgeable and very encouraging, um, they taught me a lot of skill sets that I could actually bring back into my classroom. And so the way that they teach us to interact with people and to, to have those communication skills, I bring that back to my students and very helpful. As a teacher, you're very well educated. Could you? Give us a brief insight of like how much education you have behind your name. I got my bachelor's uh, actually in linguistics and political science at UC San Diego and then I got my teaching, a single subject teaching credential in math and then I also have my master's in educational technology leadership. Wow, so that is quite a bit of education. Okay, so six overall years after high school, no financial education. <laughs> no, that, I mean, honestly, that's, that's, that's not a, a shot at Bethany, but I think that there's something to be said when there's so much in our lives that have to deal with finances, especially like when you're starting off going to college. Did you have to take loans out when you went to school? No, so my dad is a retired military and I was able to use his GI Bill. It covered, I think, half of my tuitions. I did do work study, so that helped, um, but my parents helped me a lot in that. But I'm like one of the lucky ones. Every, all of my other friends, they have major loans taken out for their, and they're still taking out loans because we need more degrees. <laughs> That's the point that I'm trying to make is that there's so much financial that we have to work with without even realizing it. In the beginning, it's accumulating a huge amount of debt just to get the education, to have the profession that you want, but then how do you manage that debt? Did anybody give you any like education as far as like how to save or grow before WFG? Just for my parents. Okay. Yeah. And then their background, is it in finance? No. Okay. Just good experience, good disciplines within their own personal lives? I would say so. I've definitely learned a lot more through WFG and I've actually brought them back to them and so they're learning as well. My dad actually takes classes with me so that's pretty awesome. Oh, nice. They definitely had good discipline. They taught me how to save and WFG taught me the vehicles where I could save to grow my money more. What do you see as far as like, what does WFG have to offer the mass public in the community? financial education. That in itself is huge. Being able to learn the different tax buckets, being able to learn how your 401k works, being able to learn all these things that were never taught to us. 
coming out of college. So financial education definitely was worth everything. Um, one of the first trainings that I brought some of my family members to was an estate planning class. And so we had an estate planning attorney come in and they were like, that in itself is worth so much more than the amount that I paid for the membership. The other thing is the personal development. Like I said, I've, I've learned so many things just from like public speaking to interacting with people to handling different types of interactions. I went to a training for one of our textbooks that we're using and the trainer says it's the technical skills that will get you the job, but it's the personal skills that will keep you the job. Being able to communicate with people, being able to have those interactions. And if you can't deal with people, they won't keep you because they'll find somebody else that they can get along with more or work, work better with so that I'm also bringing to my students and then the the family aspect I came into WFG not knowing anybody two years later a lot of them have become very very close friends and some of them I consider my family and so that's a really nice thing to have and you're just you're networking but the genuine people within WFG you just you can't stay away from them it sounds like for the general public, non-members, non-agents, it sounds like they do a lot of financial education, trying to fix that gap that we brought in the beginning of this video. But then also for its members and its agents, there's a lot of personal development growth, learning how to interact with different people, different situations. Uh, public speaking is a huge fear for a lot of people I know. So if you have a fear of public speaking, let us know in the comment section down below. WFG has a really big brand, a really big name. I can only surmise that when you first came into the business that you probably read some reviews, right? What were the majority of those reviews? Um, <laughs> well, if you look up WFG, I don't even think our website was the first thing that popped up. It was already like, is WFG a scam? Here's a Yelp review of a certain office, multiple ones after that of if it's, if it's a scam or not. Okay, well then let's take a look at this review. Bethany, looking at this review here, what do you think about it? Is this one of the ones that, that you specifically read? Or is it similar to one of the ones that you read? Similar. I think they all kind of say the same thing. All right, so if they all say the same thing like, like this, and for full disclosure, I got started maybe about 10 years ago. When I got started back then, it was $100. Bethany, how much did you pay when you got started in WFG, just to learn? $100. $100, okay. So considering inflation, if you want to know about inflation, we'll put a video above. $100 from 10 years ago to $100 now, that's pretty good. Got the better deal. She definitely did. <laughs> and then there's other things on this review that says like, oh, it's like $500 to get the license, and that's about right. But that's like an industry standard. If you go to like a Farmers, a Nationwide, a Transamerica, if you go to any one of them, that whole licensing process is about $500, just as much as to become a teacher how much would you say your overall education was? A lot more than that. On average, to get a bachelor's degree in the United States, this is probably what you're looking at for tuition. Number's a whole lot bigger than 500, isn't it? Yes. Wow, okay, so let's just go ahead and take that one down. And yeah, $500 is a lot to get a license but not compared to a traditional education. But as far as the $100, that covers simply a background check to make sure that the person that we're bringing in doesn't have any misdemeanors or felonies, especially that involving money. Because we have clients' information and their financial information available, we wanna make sure that we don't have people with that kind of reputation coming in and out of the office. It's really a security precaution. If you go into a WFG office, you're probably gonna find out that you have to sign in and out if you're a visitor. That's to track if anything goes missing, how do we follow up with that? If a company has a system that tracks people in and out of areas that have sensitive information, wouldn't you as a client feel more secure with that precaution in place versus without it? Yes. Going back to that review, maybe he did have that kind of experience. Maybe the experience wasn't good. I can say that my first time around in WFG wasn't the best. Would you agree that an organization so big has everybody doing the right thing all the time? No. The goal of the organization, the mis mission of the organization couldn't be one thing, but when you, people are human, right? And so 
it, it's always depending on each individual how they want to run it because it's an amazing platform that you can use but if you individually don't have the best values then that's something that will be caught later on anyways. I think that that's a good point to make and I think a lot of industries, a lot of good industries, you could think of like the Googles, the Facebooks, even they have things that come out about them, but really, is that the company that's doing it or is it that the individual? But Bethany, rather than just taking it from a learning aspect, um, you decided to come on board. What was one of the reasons why you decided to, to come on board and elevate yourself from someone who's just a member and learning to an agent? I wanted to help Originally, the people that I that I know, um, a lot of teachers don't know what they're doing with their financial situation, and that's because we pour so much of ourselves into our classroom that it, literally everything is put on the back burners. A lot of teachers they don't know how to read their pay stub, um, they don't know how to select certain health insurance or anything like that. And then with our finances, if you don't know what you're doing, then you just ask the classroom next to you. <laughs> Right, so when I first started, I went around to multiple departments in our campus. They just told me to start something. They just said to put $100 in every month. And so I was like, okay, that's what I'll do. When I learned stuff from WFG, I learned so much more than that. I was putting all of my money in my bank account, um, even though I should know inflation. You learn the basics, you just don't apply it. And so with WFG, like the person who helped me, they helped me apply all of these concepts. So I just kind of want to spread that and the more people that we have as agents, the more of the community that we can touch and help them and help them get educated and help sure, make sure that their financial plan is in place so that when they retire or if there's something that happens to their family that they're going to be okay. Getting into the title of this video, Is WFG a Scam? Before we answer that question, Bethany, in your definition, what's a scam? So when you first say scam to me, I think of like the emails that are sent to you. Like if you're my friend, but then you went to Paris and somebody stole your wallet, so I need to like send you $3,000. Or if you're like a prince from another country and you want to marry me, um, but I have to put that, that deposit first. So that's my orig original thought. Uh, but I think it's just the whole trying to promise something, right? And then once the person is in Right? or if I send money or anything like where I commit, something like that, then I would say usually they disappear or just whatever was promised is not delivered. Just kind of trying to trick somebody that way. Okay. Essentially, in, in your opinion, a scam is something in which someone intentionally misleads you, yes. gets you to commit to something, whether it be monetarily or, or emotionally, and then once that commitment is put into place, they give you nothing in return. Is that correct? Yes. Well, as far as whatever you guys think a scam is, please leave it for us in the comment section below. But let's get into that big question of, is WFG a scam? Why or why not? No, and the bare basics is that you have to be licensed. <laughs> right? You have to be licensed, they do a background check on you, you have to send it to the state, right? And if it was a scam, and WFG is pretty big, like I'm pretty sure that they would shut the government would shut us down mm -hmm. um, the other thing is like we work with a lot of good companies well-known companies and I don't think they would work with us if we were a scam because then our reputation would rub onto their reputation and they wouldn't want that either right? so. I just want to thank Bethany for her time coming in and letting us use her classroom for this interview and hopefully if you come from a background similar to hers or if you would like me to do an interview with someone from a different background you know, let us know in the comment section below. With that, we'll conclude the interview. Again, thank you, Bethany, for your time. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video.